it comes down to communication, we really go through five steps altogether. We call these steps and the structure. First of all, the sender has an idea. They're thinking about it, they want to process it, they want to communicate it to somebody else as they go through. And then we encode the message. It could be in writing, it could be verbally, it could be through just an expression in the process. But regardless, the sender has an idea, they want to encode the message, usually it's verbal or sometimes in writing as we go through. And then we want to send the message and transmit it through the channel. Sometimes it's your mouth, sometimes it's your pen, sometimes it's your cell phone and we text, sometimes it's an email. But regardless, we choose a channel or a pathway that we choose to communicate and then we transmit the message. And then from there, the receiver then receives the message and they have to decode what the sender wants them to hear or what they think the sender wants them to hear in the process. So they receive, they decode the message and then they go through and they provide feedback saying, okay, I think it was supposed to do this. Sometimes they don't even provide it out loud. Sometimes they just go and do it. Sometimes the process gets all muddled. That's why we have a class called business communications, because you want to go through, make certain that the message that you're communicating gets across to the receiver and they're doing what you want and that you're all on the same page doing the process. So some of the factors, sometimes you have a communication climate, a way that people say things, you know, or a slang, the context and the setting. Obviously, if you're over here, then it's going to mean something like this or over here, or it could be where you're at. Maybe it's not a business thing, you know, maybe it's a restaurant. Sometimes people will take their own personal background and their experience. They'll listen to what you're saying and then sit down and, and try to translate it that way. And that might have a factor as to what they're receiving. The knowledge, the mood, if they use too big a words, too small words, short sentences, long sentences, or it could be that they just rolled into work off the wrong side of the bed and they're not willing to listen to anything at the moment. We also go through and we all have our own glasses or our own hearing thing that we hear and we filter things through our personal experience on top of that. So when somebody's trying to tell you something, you're listening and you're puzzled about it because it doesn't fit in with your personal experience and you may misinterpret what's going on. So all these factors, they'll help shape the level of understanding that somebody has. Sometimes there's barriers. Somebody may sit down and bypass a boss, by the way, that's a really bad idea. Make sure your boss is included. Don't jump over the top and go to your boss's boss. That's a bad thing. Okay, differing frames of reference. But I just meant to do this over here. No, you did it. This is what I see you doing. I mean, two different frameworks of reference in the process. Sometimes there's a lack of communication skills or language skills. You may sit down and have something. You may say, this word over here and somebody gets so focused on a mispronunciation or what they think is a mispronunciation and they can't hear the rest of what you're saying in the process as you go through or there's distractions the trucks going by there's noise or it's one of those evil things called a television set you're talking to somebody and your eyes you can't help but keep on going to the television or worst of all your cell phone all kinds of distractions so sometimes you have to work to overcome these obstacles when you're trying to communicate. You have to realize that, first of all, communication simply will never be perfect. It is an imperfect process. Sometimes you have to adapt the message to the receiver. You have somebody that is ADD and they can't keep their attention very long. They say, okay, focus, focus, focus. Or somebody sits there, they may not learn well by listening, but they have a really good thing about visual aids and the visual aids is better for them. Sometimes you're better off writing things down. There's three different types of learning that we go through in the process. Sometimes we just need to learn to improve our listening skills improve our language skills as we go through. And sometimes we have to sit back and just sit down and question our preconceptions as to what that person is going to tell us. They're always on my case. I can't believe it nonstop. And you just can't hear them around their negativity in the process. Sometimes you also want to encourage feedback. Okay, did you get what I said? Okay, sometimes that really helps quite a bit in the process. So really, these are the five things that you have to understand about communication. It really is foundational to everything that we have, these five steps. And you'll say it different ways and everything else, but in essence, 
you are the sender, you want to sit down and, and construct a communication that the receiver can hear and then receive it within. Take care.